Good morning, Colby. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. How much have you improved since your first bout of one championship? What have you been working on? I mean, a whole lot. That's been a long time period since my one debut. It's been a year and a half. Obviously, COVID kind of, you know, threw a monkey wrench into plans for 2020. I wanted to fight multiple times last year. That didn't get to happen, unfortunately. But that meant there was a lot of time for me to train and focus on myself. Um, I'm very, very um, blessed and fortunate to be able to have a gym of my own uh, with my husband. So we had, you know, all the time in the world to just train and get better and focus on improving in areas that I felt like I was lacking. So I feel like um, for this camp in particular, I spent a lot of time um, up in Sacramento actually with Team Alpha Male. So I made that kind of change um, for this fight. And I think that everybody's going to see uh, a new and improved uh, Colby 2.0 in every area of my game. And I'm really looking forward to showcasing my new skills. Here, our first question will go to Gavin Austin of Behind the Grid. Gavin, please go ahead. Okay. Um, do you think having more experience as a professional fighter than your opponent will have an effect on what happens during your fight? Um, I think that having that professional experience does play a factor somewhat. Um, now, Courtney's had a lot of amateur experience. And if you look at our amateur experience compared to one another, she's got you know, more amateur of my fights than I do. Um, I do have some pro experience, which I mean, that, that changes a few things from the rule set and the minutes and just uh, fighting under such a big banner as one championship and such, an, such a large crowd, big platform, all of that kind of plays a role. So I do feel like um, I have the upper hand in that aspect, but I don't think that that's going to be any determining factor of how uh, strong she's going to come out at me or change the way the fight ends up in any sort of way. Our next question will go to Donnell Giovanni of MMA Island. How did you feel watching Raymond in there in the Bellator ring and him showing his ground game some more? Were you proud of him? Oh, of course I'm proud of him. I mean, everybody looks at Raymond to me and maybe I'm a little bit biased, but I think he's the best striker in the entire world. You put him in kickboxing, MMA, Muay Thai, whatever situation, I think that he's the best. Um, <laughs> Yes, I'm a little bit biased, but um, that being said, um, you can look at him now and say he's not just a striker. He's a mixed martial artist. So he was a kickboxer um, going into MMA, having to learn all the grappling, having to learn all the wrestling, basically from the ground up. And he's kind of having to do a crash course because he's not 20 years old anymore, just starting to learn MMA with all the time in the world, you know, so he's kind of having to put a rush on things, but that just showcases right there. We were in a camp together. We were up at Alpha Male together. We've been training at Training Lab with Mark Minos, Juan uh, Archuleta, TJ Dillashaw, Uriah Faber, training with crazy, um, incredible athletes. I think that Raymond was a good example to show the kind of improvements, um, not only that he's made, but that I've made as well, that I'll be able to show in a couple of days. And will you be training at Team Alpha Male going forward? Yeah, that's a great question because um, a lot of different factors went into that transition. So um, my home gym is the training lab uh, with Mark Munoz, with Juan Archuleta, TJ Dillashaw, um, our coach, Sam Calavita. That's my home um, up in Southern California, Orange County. Um, COVID kind of, you know, the restrictions in Southern California are really, really tight. So a lot of gyms closed down. Um, a lot of people are not out um, and available to train. So I kind of had, um, I didn't have as many training partners as I needed. That being said, um, Team Alpha Male has just a plethora of so many bodies, you know, 50 people of pro practice and they're all wrestlers. And that's, I feel like my wrestling and my cage work was the one thing that I need to improve on the most. And it, and it helps that my brother's up there already naturally. So he opened his home uh, for me and for Raymond. And we were able to go and make that transition this camp. And we kind of went back and forth. It was an every other week thing for the past, you know, 10, 12 weeks, however long it was. So we could, you know, be at home on the weekends with Coach Cal in the garage and then be up there during the week for practices. But um, I honestly feel like this camp in particular being up at Team Alpha Male, you know, you, like we talk about the only way to get better is kind of just throw yourself into the fire, so to speak. With all those wrestlers up there, you're bound to get better. And I feel like I've made the most improvements in this camp that I have in my entire um, mixed martial arts career. 
Our next question will go to Ivan Stewart of Dugout Philippines. Ivan, please proceed. So my question is, your brother, Sage, was supposed to fight as well on first day, but but yeah, he, he backed out due to like some complications on COVID. So you feel sad that you, that you won't have uh, Sage by your side on, thir- on Thursday? Of course, that was a really unfortunate thing. And it, it does, it, it breaks my heart because um, I know how badly he wanted this fight and I know how badly he was ready to come back. I mean, obviously after his last fight and his debut, not going the way that any of us anticipated, being off for two years, that's a long time. And so he, he was more than ready to come back. And then COVID is just one of those things that, you know, you can't, you can't uh, play around with. So when he got COVID, he got very, very sick. Um, a whole bunch of things happened. He's still dealing, still dealing with some post COVID complications that he's having to see specialists for. Um, but it's really disheartening. The last time that we fought together on a card was back when we were both amateurs you know, so many years ago, we had, you know, all these amateur fights together on the same card. So to get to do that again, uh, on a one championship card was going to be massive. And especially being on TNT, I was really looking forward to it just as much as him. So I'm very sad that he, you know, got sick and is still dealing with these issues. And I know that he'll be better soon. And when he is ready to come back and fight again, hopefully we can get on another card again uh, later. So are you dedicating this fight to your brother? Yeah, you could say that. You can definitely say that. Um, I mean, this fight's obviously the biggest one of my career. I feel like I'll say that, you know, every time moving forward, there's there's a lot riding on this fight. You know, there was going to obviously be the pressure of, you know, fighting first, opening up the card, and then having Sage fight after me. That's not happening anymore. But, you know, getting the amazing opportunity to fight on a TNT card as they're coming to America is, is huge. And I don't take that lightly. So um, yeah, you can say that it would be for him. Our next question will go to Jackson Garst of Phantom Sports. Okay. So for some of us, us casual West coast people, how would you describe your style? Cause uh, most of us are more familiar with the UFC or the Bellator, but how would you describe yourself in a one championship setting? I mean, I feel like in any setting, you're going to look at me and you're going to think I am a tall, long striker. So no matter what situation you put me in, I feel like, especially just for my genetics and my stature, I mean, you can look at the sage, um, very tall, long, and lean. I feel like I'm going to have the reach and the distance advantage over anybody that I fight, especially at my weight that I walk around at. So, um, and I'm a striker at heart. So I love to keep it on the feet standing. And that's one thing I love about one championship is because of the, I personally feel like because of the hydration tests and all the safety protocols that they take for the fighters, it makes the the fights that much more exciting because the fighters can give a thousand percent out in the cage versus any other promotion. Like you would just stated, you know, you're depleting yourself as an athlete when you cut so much weight, which, you know, can hinder your performance. So I feel like one championship as a whole, the fights are that much more exciting. The caliber of fighters are tremendous. Um, and all of it kind of plays a role into each other, but, um, I'm a striker at heart. And I think that everybody uh, that sees me fight will see that. All right. And of course, we know that you're definitely trying to go for that flyweight goal, no doubt. So who would you say you want to see next if you do defeat Courtney Miller? Of course, you were supposed to see uh, Savani M. Would you say somebody you'd like to see in the future? Absolutely. Yeah, I was really looking forward to facing Savannah. I know that she got a pretty bad injury. Um, You know, one championship, their flyweight women's MMA division, you know, they're looking at growing the division. And I'm hoping that I can be one of the athletes that can help do that. And Savannah is uh, another female that's in the division. Um, and we, I believe, are bound to face each other um, later on down the road. So I know that she got injured this time. I was really looking forward to that fight, as I know she was. So if she's my next opponent, you know, several months from now, later down this year, I would be more than happy to share the cage with her. All right, and just one last one. Uh, what, what do you really think about Courtney uh, Martin? She's coming off that big Gamma World Championship in 2020. What, do you, are, what are your thoughts and what are some strategies you have taken into this fight? Yeah, I feel like Courtney as a whole is extremely aggressive and she's very tough. Um, she goes forward and she likes to throw. Um, that being said, she, I mean, she took the fight on two weeks notice. So that says something right there about her heart and about how tough she really is because um, there's not too many people that would do that. So I'm ready for her to come forward, be aggressive and put the pressure on. And um, just like I'm sure she's ready for the same. 
Our next question will go to Jay Anderson of Cage Side Press. I just wanted to start by building off that uh, last one. I mean, Courtney, like you said, had two weeks to prepare for this, but you also have two weeks to prepare for her. So how has that switched up the game plan for you? Yeah, that's a great uh, question because it does affect both of us. Obviously, I was training for you know, however many weeks for Savannah. And then that, unfortunately, she got injured. So I'm very, very happy that they were, one championship was able to find me an opponent and that Courtney stepped up and said, yeah, I want to fight. Um, you know, not too many people would do that such short notice, um, but I do understand the magnitude of this card. So it's a great opportunity for both of us. So I'm extremely grateful that she did say yes. Um, that being said, you know, Everybody is a little bit different stylistically, you know, whether, you know, they're more of a kickboxer, you know, grappler, whatever that being said, I'm still going to be me no matter what. And I'm still going to use my um, advantages and my attributes in this fight. And I would do that with anybody. So yes, I got an opponent change, but that doesn't mean my game plan changes. It still stays the same. And it still means I'm going to be myself, use my range and my length and try to keep her at bay. I know this is her pro debut. She does have all that amateur experience. Do you do sort of a crash course on the footage available of a switch like this? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I feel like any fighter would, um, you know, obviously do their homework. They have to do that. So um, she does have a ton of amateur experience, like you said. Um, and from what I've seen, she's extremely tough, very durable, likes to go forward, is an aggressive, and is very well-rounded in every area. Um, you know, some submissions, some knockouts, finishes, decisions. She's got everything. Um, so from what I've seen, her amateur record is 8-1 uh, or 9-1, and one, something like that. And she is a Gamma World Champ. So uh, that doesn't, I'm not taking her lightly whatsoever. Courtney's tough. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm, I'm ready for anything that she's going to throw at me, you know, there's only so much homework that I can do in two weeks. Like I stated earlier, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to change who I am as a fighter, but I'll be ready for anything that she uh, throws. And you mentioned uh, earlier, Raymond had a fight uh, just a couple of weeks ago. I did have a chance to speak to him as well. Um, what's it like going home to someone and having that support from someone who's in the sport himself, understands what you're going through and is able to help you through it? Oh, it's fantastic. It's something that I can't actually describe how great it really is because I mean he's my partner in life but also my training partner as well so we do everything together we run a business together we train together everything's together so it's, it's great that I have somebody who not only supports me and pushes me but understands what I'm going through and does it themselves it just I feel like um you know, like being here in Singapore, only having one corner man, he's here with me in my corner. There's not too many fighters that I, you know, that can say that have their spouses as their one corner that they would, you know, trust fully 100% with all of their, their training and everything like that. So it's, it's something that, you know, you can't, you can't really describe how great it really is. And I'm very grateful for it. <laughs> and last one for me, is the timing better or worse to have both of you fighting so close together? Would you have prefer, prefer to more of a buffer, so to speak? No, I actually, this is the first time that we've been in the camp together and I actually really love it because, you know, it's funny when, you know, fighters as a whole, I feel like when you're in a camp, you're very strict, you're very serious about your sleep, your training, your recovery, your diet. And then when one of us is in a camp and the other's not, the other's a little bit more flexible. One is a little bit more moody, one's a little, you know, not. So it's nice to be going through it together because it, it takes the pressure off of both of us and we help each other out too. So um, this has been fantastic. And I am glad that he fought first because <laughs> I get extremely nervous for him. I'm glad that I'm, you know, fighting after him and then he's all done and can focus on me while I'm here, which is great. Um, the only thing I didn't like is that it was so close to one another that I was not in Connecticut for his fight. Um, I had to be at home and watch on TV, which was unfortunate. That was the first one that I had to miss in so many years. But um, I mean, I, I love it. I wouldn't change a thing. I'm not going to lie. He said he's more nervous for you. So I guess there's no, uh, no good option. Oh, like really quickly, my last fight, my one debut, I'll go and tell this to people because I think it's hilarious now, but, um, my opponent, Putri Padme, she's already in the ring. They're announcing my name. I'm about to walk out and open the curtains up. He's so nervous pacing behind me as I am getting my name called. He goes and throws up right on the floor, right beside me <laughs> when I'm about to walk out and I'm seeing him throw up on the floor. And I'm thinking to myself, my like, gosh, that doesn't make me feel any better about what I'm about to go do. So yes, he gets more nervous for me than I do for him. 
<laughs> That's wild. Well, best of luck this week. And hopefully he's a little less nervous this time. I don't know if that'll ever change. We'll see. <laughs> Our next question goes to Leon Jennings of Asian Persuasion MMA. Leon, please go ahead. You touched on uh, your brother a minute, moment ago. You've got an update. How's he feeling now? You know, he feels it's hard because physically on the outside, he looks like he's like he's good, but he's having to see specialists every week and get all this blood work and not do any kind of training, any kind of working out. So as an athlete mentally, that does kind of, you know, mess with your head a little bit. Overall though, he's doing okay. He's taken off, you know, several, several weeks of training um, to kind of get his blood work back level to be normal. Um, I mean, he's doing the best that he can under the, uh, under the circumstances. Cool. Well, we hope he gets better soon and hope we see him back in soon. Um, Eddie, Eddie mentioned a moment ago, he's staying on US time zone. Are you doing the same thing? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it is weird, you know, being obviously over here with the time change. And then because the card is live, you know, we're so used to fighting in the evening time. I believe I'll be the first fight here at 8.30 in the morning, something like that. So that's a little bit of a change too. So you're dealing with, you know, a 15 hour time difference, and then I'm having to get up at five in the morning and get myself used to that. So I'll be ready to go by 8.30. So that does play a little bit of a, a factor, but I kind of like the fact that I'll be done so early and we'll have the rest of the day and can enjoy the rest of the fights. Excellent. And lastly, uh, we've got the one Atom White Grand Prix coming up. What are your thoughts then? And do you have a favorite to win the whole thing? You know what, actually, there's a newcomer coming in to the Grand Prix. She's a friend of mine, Elise Anderson. She's from the States. I think she's somebody that um, the world really needs to look out for. She's coming from Invicta. She's super tough and she's very talented in every area. So she's somebody that I'll be rooting for for that Grand Prix. A next question goes to Dylan Bowker of My MMA News. I'm just curious because the debut outing being in more of like a ring kind of confine and this one kind of being in the one circle here, it seems like the grappling in this last camp has really been like a big area of growth for you. Do you think that's really going to present itself in a fight whereby there could be more combative interaction along Yeah, the that's wall? a great question. I do feel like that is. Yeah, obviously the ring is a little bit different for an MMA fight. You got the ropes, you know, and you got the corners. So it does prevent some movement. Um, and, and you can't obviously wall walk up the cage and things like that. So I'm happy to be in a cage and I'm happy that it's a circle. So the circle helps me utilize my movement and my reach a little bit more, my distance and my footwork um, in the cage. Also, you know, having such an aggressive fighter that I'm going to be facing the cage will help me. It could help her too. You know, if it does go to the ground, help us both get up. Um, I have been working a lot of my wrestling, my cage work and my ground and pound. So uh, I think the, ca the cage could be um, definitely an advantage um, for myself, but you know, depending on who you're facing, it could be a disadvantage too. Colby, we're gonna move into rapid fire questions. Whatever comes to your mind, just shoot, all right? Okay. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? Invisibility. Favorite country you've been to? Uh, duh, Singapore. What's your favorite food? Lasagna. <laughs> Who has the best fight style in one championship? Oh, in one championship. Good question. Um, you know, I'm going to go with the female. I'm going to say Angela Lee. What is the one item you can never live without? Probably my cell phone. What's the one compliment that people give you the most? Um, they like my height. Who's the nicest one championship athlete that you've met? Oh, my God. Gosh, Brandon Vera, he's amazing. That's like, he's that he's a very cool. nice guy. He's so awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Kobe. That's it from us. All the best in the circle.